10 years, folks, 10 years, 10 seasons that the Philadelphia Phillies will be missing the postseason. Yesterday, I, I was holding on to this phrase. I was holding on to this word, hopefully. And I even I was smiling about it at one point during this during, during the show. Oh, hopefully. It's funny how you can't say Phillies without hopefully. Well, now that hopefully, that hope is gone. It's dead. It's, it, the, the eulogy will be uh, right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to uh, bury the Phillies. Bury the Phillies. Yeah, yeah that, that's what we're doing right now. We're, we're burying the Phillies. The Arizona Diamondbacks put a nail in the coffin of the Phillies yesterday. Uh, and this was after you had already studded the coffin with uh, Reese Hoskins saying that his season was done. He's going to get surgery. We'll let you hear from him in a second. Uh, this was after Zach Eflin was supposed to come back and make his start, but that evidently didn't work out because he came back to the ballpark yesterday after being taken off the injured list and put in the starting rotation again and slotted the start last night's game. But unfortunately, at the very last minute, he went for treatment right before the game with his knee. He did not respond to treatment, according to Tom McCarthy, right before the game during the broadcast. And then he was scratched, and Matt Moore got yet another start for the Phillies. All right. So Reese is done for the year. The rotation isn't going to be as good as we thought it was going to be because we thought Zach Eflin was going to come back and at least be a solid fourth starter in this rotation. Uh, and you have lost, essentially, the guy that has been the heartbeat of the organization for the entire season and really the last couple of years in Reese Hoskins. Then they go out and they lose, despite sending nine batters to the plate in the ninth inning, five of them scoring, and you still lose the game. I am looking back on 10 years, 10 seasons of the Philadelphia Phillies, and if there is one constant theme, other than the most glaring obvious thing, which is just lack of talent, which is the most important thing, let's get that out of the way before we get into any of the drama that surrounds it, but if there's one common thing to look at over the last decade of Phillies baseball now where they're going to be missing the playoffs after making the playoffs in 2011 with uh, Roy Halladay and all those guys, right? After missing the playoffs that following season, the last 10 years now, the last 10 seasons, it's been a late season collapse. For the vast majority of those 10 years, it's been all about the late August to September collapse where they have given you hope. And they say, you know what? No, 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 we're going to buck the trend. We're going to turn things around now. This is where the Phillies are going to make the playoffs again. Um, uh, the, 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 the late August happened under Gabe Kappa. I mean, I feel like I've recounted it a thousand times already. But if there's one common theme, it's the fact that they have collapsed in the second half of the season. After they have shown you some hope, after they have let you hold on to that word, hopefully, if this works out and that works out, then we're good. And hopefully this works out over here. And then hopefully comes up, somebody comes up. They actually used the phrase yesterday, next man up, in terms of Reese Hoskins. Joe, Joe Girardi said that. And it was the most, like, sheepish way to say next man up. Like, the Eagles, when they won their Super Bowl, they said, hey, next man up mentality. Like, ah, let's get it. Sixers even use it when guys got injured. Next man up mentality, that whole thing. Joe Girardi was like, well, I guess the next guy is going to set. I guess next, next, next man up. Like, it was just, it didn't, it didn't grab you. We'll let you hear a little bit later. <sighs> but I just look back on our last 10 seasons, thinking about the injuries, thinking about the prospects that have been called up and have not helped you, thinking about the prospects that have been called up and been misused, thinking about the guys that were supposed to be the next ones, the next guys that were supposed to be the next Chase Utley or Ryan Howard or Cole Hamels or whoever, Jimmy Rollins, whoever it was supposed to be, and every single one of them has just, either hit a brick wall or just not here anymore. J.P. Crawford is one of those guys who's actually put a, a nice little career for himself together over the last couple of seasons out there in uh, Seattle. Uh, and who do you have playing shortstop right now for you? Didi Gregorius. And I know Didi came up and got your last RBIs of the night last night with a two-run single to right field. Great. But what is happening? Like, we have talked a lot about Reese Hoskins, Harper, J.T. Romuto, all these guys throughout the season. Didi Gregorius, I know he's had an injury and he's been dealing with that throughout the season. But where's the where's been the production? Where's the production been with Didi Gregorius? And I'm looking at that play he had in the seventh inning. That ball hit over his shoulder that he's tracking back in shallow left field for, and he lets it drop in. And I'm thinking that's a play that nine times out of ten I thought he would make. It's just these these little things where you're waiting for that next man to step up, and you just you have, there's nobody that you really have confidence in stepping up. 
here's what I do have confidence in. If you're going to continue to watch this season and you're not going to cont- completely make a shift over to football, because <laughs> it's one of the first things I thought of when I saw Reese Hoskins talking to the media in the dugout yesterday. That's one of the first things I thought of. It was, uh, all right, uh, let's go birds, <laughs> right? Uh, no? Uh, fly eagles fly? No? But one of the things I thought of yesterday when I was watching Reese Hoskins in the dugout was uh, how quickly will people just transition if they haven't done it already to just focusing 100% on the Eagles? And then, of course, looking at the, the Sixers and the Flyers and all that. But as I'm, I'm watching Reese yesterday, I'm thinking, who's going to be the guy that's going to step up and, uh, and, and make sure they take over for this team? Who's going to be the guy? And I thought, there's going to be no guy that takes over for this team and, like, propels them into the postseason by any means. Now five and a half games out of first place here on uh, August 27th. <sighs> But I do look forward to watching Bryce Harper for the rest of this year because I think we're going to learn a lot about Bryce Harper because nobody is expecting the Phillies to make the playoffs. I don't think most people expected the Phillies to make the playoffs anyway, even before last night, even before yesterday as a whole with all the injuries that we found out with Hoskins and and still Eflin and those guys. Uh, But still, again, losing to the Diamondbacks again, these are the games that we're going to look at and go, all right, well, this is where they could pack it in or we could find out a lot about these guys on this team. JT Romuto is another one of these guys, but I think mostly we're all going to be focused. If anything, we're going to be checking box scores at least to see at least what Bryce Harper did the night before. That's what we'll be looking for. We'll be scrolling Twitter to see what Bryce Harper did the night before. That's the only guy I'll be really focusing in on. Uh, other than that, maybe we'll get some September call-ups and we'll see how they do. We'll get maybe, maybe they'll give us some hope for the following season. Maybe they'll give us some hope that things are about to change. But I have put it all on da- on uh, Joe Girardi for uh, weeks ago, talking about when the Phillies were winning eight in a row, and I say this all comes to Joe Girardi. Well, now it's off of Joe Girardi's shoulders. Now I'm 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 out. Like Joe, you had your chance. It's not happening. The team's not good enough. Also, uh, injuries are just too much to overcome as well. Uh, my focus is off of Joe Girardi. My focus now shifts from the manager of this baseball team to the president of baseball operations, Dave Dombrowski, and Sam Fold as well, their general manager. Now it's all about making sure that this does not go 11 seasons between playoffs for the Philadelphia Phillies. 